Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is my review for Justified Season 6, Episode 9, Burned. And once again, another amazing episode. I mean, seriously, this season is just putting out amazing episode after amazing episode. I would say it was the best episode of the season, but I'm not going to say that because Episode 7 is still the best episode of the entire series. So I can't say this was the best episode of the season. However, if, if besides Episode 7, this was definitely the best episode. I mean, thing, shit is just hitting the fan now. And we have four episodes left. Holy shit, four episodes left. And... I'm honestly not ready for the show to end. I really am not looking forward to an ending, but I, I think that's just because of how good the writing has become on this show and how good this season really is. And everything about this episode was amazing. So many crazy shit happened in this episode, and I can't wait for next week's episode. So let's just get into this episode because it was amazing. So we start with Raylan talking to Rachel and Art about Ava and Boyd and how she's burned, and he's not really sure, of course, if Ava's the best CI anymore. So he tells Art that he doesn't know what happened, but she's flipped, and... She's not really working with them anymore. She's now working with Boyd, so there's really no point in keeping her as CI. So Vasquez comes in and says it's no surprise since Boyd is likely making her promises and has 100k to give her for the Boyd linked to everything in Kentucky, but if they want him on Rico, they need a CI. So Art says he may know another CI, and he and Raylan roll to see Win. So... I thought this was a really, really great scene. They pull him out naked out of his tanning bed, and it was really funny because Art's just like, this, I never want to see that, and I thought that was really funny. And Wynn tells them to get their um, bony asses out, but they beat him down and shove him back in the tanning bed. And Raylan tells him to calm down, and he agrees. They let him out, and he tells Art he's supposed to be the grump. I like that Art's working with them. As I said, I thought Art was going to work with them, and I like that he's working with them because, I mean, Raylan can't do all this by himself. He does need Art, and it's awesome that Art's working with them. So, they show him some case files, and Art says they came from Simon Poole, and he was the rat, and Art says Poole was murdered the same time the records were sealed. And Wynn says the ship was sinking, and he didn't want to go down with it. So, Art says they wanted to do it again, and Braylon says he'd hate for these files to leak, and Catherine would find out he got Grady killed. And Wynn says if they burn him, he's dead, and he asks them to wait, and says he may be able to help them again. Now, of course, there's nothing scary to Wynn than death. Wynn thinks death was, like, the worst thing ever. You know, to, to win, death is the ultimate uh, failure, and, you know, Wynn obviously doesn't want to die. There are parts of this episode where I thought Wynn was going to die. There were. I mean, I thought they were setting up Wynn's death in this episode. Because here's the thing. Wynn's a great character, but he, I mean, he is a main character and everything, but he appears so few, you know, in so many, he appears so much that I just feel like he's going to die. I really do. Um, I'm, I'm calling it now Wynn's going to die. So Wynn meets Mikey at the uh, RV, and he actually seems like he actually wants to help him. He says he may be able to help him again. Now, of course, they did give him a death threat, so, but he does decide to help him. And he meets Mikey at the RV, and Mikey isn't happy about being a snitch, and Wynn tells him to not be so self-righteous. And I have to agree with what he said there, and because, you know, he can't be self-righteous about this, and he has to listen to them. And Mikey says he has a code, and Wynn asks who he's loyal to, Catherine, Boyd, or Markham, and he says any of them would turn on them to save their hide. So, really, he's loyal to none of them. He's working with Raylan, and that's how it's going to be now. And I'd have to agree with that. I mean, each one of them... I mean, Boyd definitely, he has his own... He cares about Ava. That's what matters to him. Catherine, she cares about uh, the money and things like that. And Markham's just a very evil guy. So, Catherine chats with Avery. He, you know, with, with Markham, he wants to parade her around to meet people. And CBS is there with a gun, and Catherine as if he was one of hers. He tells them to both sit down, sit their asses down... And Seabass says he wants severance pay, and Avery says he just paid for his loyalty. And Seabass says he paid for his disloyalty to his former CO. And Avery says he knows where his money is, and Seabass says he could tell some tales if he got caught. And he says he'll tell, he'll take Catherine's ring and call it a day. So Avery says it has sentimental value, and Seabass says unless it can bring them back from the dead, it doesn't matter. Catherine offers him a diamond tennis bracelet from her purse, and CBS says that will do. She looks and then shoots him with her little gun she keeps in there, and that was just awesome to see. And again, I, I feel like Catherine's going to kill Avery, and just seeing how powerful she is just by killing uh, Seabass makes me think, you know what, she'll probably kill Avery. Because if she really is that much of a badass just by just like by shooting Seabass once, I mean, that was pretty awesome. And Avery says he thought he'd seen all her tricks, and she says she could use a new purse if he wants to show his gratitude, and she calls for a cleanup. So, then we see Ava tells Boyd that Raylan knew that he was working with Zachariah and says he would have locked her up if she denied it, and Boyd says they're going to watch the main entrance while they slip out the vent ventilation shaft. So, 
Wayne shows up then, and Boyd says he's a long way from home, and Wayne sets home, says home is where the RV is, and I thought that was kind of a funny line, and he has to speak to Boyd, and Boyd asks Ava to step out, but Wynne says she can stay, and Wynne says Avery's hosting a Harlan gathering, and then we'll move the money, and he says Catherine told him it was happening, but she doesn't know where the new location is. So Boyd says the only chance is to get the money during the party, and Wynne asks him to let him know when it's done and says he hopes to leave the, this place and never come back because, you know, they, they all want to leave Harlan at this point. They all want to leave Harlan County, and Boyd says Raylan is pulling the string, and she says if he is, he didn't tell her. He says they need to play their one-time get-out-of-jail-free card, and she agrees. So Boyd goes to meet Zachariah in the tunnel and says they need to make this happen in two hours because, you know, they need to find a way to get out of there, and Zachariah says it's too risky. He leaves while Zachariah curses, and Tim, and, you know, he's kind of upset what Zachariah is doing, and, you know, he's pretty upset at him. So Tim says that, uh, here, and I gotta say, Tim, again, once again, hilarious. He's so funny. He's so much of a dick, but he's so funny, and he's, he's like, here comes the douche mobile as Wynn drives up in the RV, and Wynn tells him that he told Boyd that the money is being moved, and he made sure that Ava heard it, and they remark that Mikey doesn't look happy, and Tim says it's like finding out his father is cheating with the girl, you know, it's like, it's like finding out daddy is cheating with the girl next door, and I like that he, um, he talked about that because it's true. He's not really happy about that. So Wynn says Boyd is hitting it during the party, and Raylan says he needs to know weaponry and people, and Wynn fakes like he's making a phone call and asking about weapons, and Raylan tells Wynn to tell Boyd he wants in on the robbery, and he tells Wynn unless he wants to spend the rest of his life running from the Dixie Mafia, he better make it happen. Now, also back in this episode was Loretta, and I love what they did with Loretta in this episode, because as I said, I knew we would see Loretta again, and I knew eventually this would all connect. And again, it just shows how serial Justified really is, you know, how much of a serial drama it is, and how much you have to watch the entire show to watch the show. It definitely makes me happy that I watched the whole show, because, like, Sons of Anarchy, when they had characters on, I didn't really care, but this, like, when I see a new kid, when, when I see an old face, I'm like, oh my god, Soretta, oh my god, is this person, oh my god, is this person, it, like, it gets me excited. So Loretta comes home, sees a snake on, on the floor, then Boone comes in, says he didn't mean to startle her, and Boone is really creepy here. This was a very creepy scene. She tells him to get out of her ass. He says he's new and just wanted to say hi to his neighbor. He sees the snake and asks if she knows she is a dead snake and says it looks like someone shot the head clean off and he asks if it was her. And Loretta tells him to get out of her house. He says they would be one hell of a shot to get just the head and asks how they did. And he pulls his gun and says there's no reason to do that and show off. He toys with his gun to scare her and says you want to hit it just right. And Boone says, whoever shot that snake is deranged, and if she's made enemies, she should make peace now they don't send that lunatic back. He tells her she's a beautiful girl, promises to check back on her. He's really freaking her out, and you can definitely tell he's, he's just freaking her out at this point. And he asks if, he, if she needs help getting rid of that snake, and Loretta says she'll be fine, and he leaves, and that was just really creepy. But again, it's just showing um, how powerful Loretta is, and that she can do this all herself, and just how much of a badass Loretta really is. She really is a badass, so... Boyd tells Ava and Earl to be on the lookout for extra security measures, and then Loretta shows up to the bar and says she needs a word with Boyd. Now, I know you've seen Loretta work with Raymond, but I don't really think we've ever seen Loretta work with Boyd, and I love this. I love that she's working with Boyd now. And he says she's Walt McCready's daughter, and he asks what he can do for her. She says she owns the Bennett land and is looking to acquire more. She says what she doesn't have is muscle or distribution, but knows more about rolling weed than anyone else. And he asks if Avery is shaking her tree. And Boyd asks about Raylan's fondness for her. And she says she has bigger problems than Raylan and says he's not lawn for Harlan. He asks if she really has Max's money and says she needs more land. And she knows which property she needs and tells him. Boyd says they agreed to sell to him and not Avery because, you know, that is what they agreed to. And she asks how much he wants and he says she can have them if she pays the owners a reasonable price and keeps Harlan like Harlan. And he says his men will protect her as long as she pays them out well. And he says this town will be hers if she plays her cards right. And Earl walks her out. And Ava says this is happening fast, and Boyd says this will be the last night they spend in Harlan County because now they have the money that they need, and working with Loretta, you know, who's very powerful and very rich, could get them this money. So he kisses her cheek, and you just feel this sense of hope for them. You really do. I mean, you, you think that's going well for them, especially because, but as we know, when Duffy's going to turn against Boyd, so it really is sad, but also you do have hope for them. You want it to work out well for them, and I love that about Justified. 
So Raylan goes to the pizza place for a little uh, shindig. He orders the most expensive whiskey since drinks are free. And he looks around and steps his drink. And Loretta shows up and we see Avery's there with Catherine. And Raylan tells Loretta she's got more balls and sense for showing up. He offers her Arlo's land and plot. And she says for a reasonable price she is. Which I think is a good idea overall. You know, what he wants to do with Arlo's uh, land. You know, maybe just give it to Loretta. So Boom walks over and acts creepy. He's just acting so creepy here. And Raylan tells him he works for Avery. And he asks if he's one of the Colorado boys. Raylan tells him that Avery's former employees have not fared well in Harlan. And Boone calls them jarheads. He says those boys have no soul. And Boone says he's everything he hoped for right down to the hat. He says the man who invented the Seaston is from New Jersey. And Loretta tells him to show him his gun to the marshal the way he showed it to her. And Raylan asks if he has a real gun or just that one. And Raylan says he doesn't have much regard for his well-being showing it like that. And Boone says he looks forward to calling on her again real soon. So he's just acting really creepy. I don't know what it is with Boone. He's just really creepy. So, but the thing is, like, Loretta doesn't really care. She's much stronger than it. She doesn't care. So boy and show up to the party, and Catherine says they make quite the pair. She says he's far more pulled. He's more pulled together than she imagined. She says Abe is a pretty thing, and she pretends she doesn't know them. And Avery says he'd like to kill them both, but she says that would put a damper on the party. And he says it's time, and Avery goes and addresses the crowd and thanks them for being there. And he says he knows how many of them think he's a stranger, then reminds them he offers an award for a dangerous fugitive and offered many of them generous settlements for their property. And he says he didn't come to reverse the town's fortunes. He says he came back here for love and says they should say hello to his fiance Catherine. Then he calls up Boyd and asks if he came to call aspirations on him. And Boyd says he threw a, he throws a hell of a party and he's enjoying himself. He asks if he's planning to do to Harlem what he did to all those towns in Colorado. And Boyd says that people need the money earned in the community to stay in the community. And Avery says he offered cash while Boyd offered threats. So then Loretta decides to speak. And I thought this scene was just, this was fantastic. She pipes up and says everyone Boyd spoke to is still alive, which is true. Everyone that Boyd's ever worked with, they're still alive. The only person I think that Boyd has spoke to that's not alive is Johnny. But that's because Johnny betrayed him. Anyone that's worked with Boyd, they're still alive. You know, when Duffy's still alive, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people that work for him are still alive. Carl, Carl's there. Uh, you know, a lot of those people... You know, Errol, Limehouse, anyone that's ever worked with him, they're still alive. And he um, says that Red Crowell isn't there and several others. And she said Red Crowell is skittish since his place burned to the ground. And Loretta says she's spooked by the decapitated snake in her house. And she says she offers the same thing Avery offers, but she's local. She says her partner cares as much as she does about Harlan, says it's Boyd Crowder. And she tells them she'll give them cash for their land, but they don't have to leave. And she says she'll put seeds on their land and they can all work it. She says they'll make Harlan prosperous, their own slaves, their own shelves, and send City Mouse Markham on his way. And everyone applauds and thinks it's basically a great idea. So they're definitely teaming up and I definitely really enjoy it. So Boyd talks to a bunch of people at the party and then tells her she's not subtle at all. And he tells her, whisper gets you further than a roar, she said. And I really like the line, a whisper gets you further than a roar, because it's true. If you whisper to someone something, it's more powerful than if you just tell the whole world about it. It's not as powerful. So she says they can't leave Harlan to the likes of Markham. And he goes to Ava and says he has to see a man about a vault and tells her and Earl to keep their eyes open. And when he's at them, like he's going to Zachariah. So Raylan stands at the bar at the ready, and Loretta goes to talk to Raylan, and he tells her that Boyd is about to be arrested or killed, and she asks if he'll still sell her his land, and she says when the dust settles with Boyd, maybe he'll reconsider. And Catherine tells Avery something has to be done about that girl. I thought that was a really funny line. So Avery tells Bo Boone to find out if she has any kin that the property would go to if she died, and it seems like Avery's going to kill her. But anyway, but if Avery killed Loretta... I definitely feel like Avery, you know, and Catherine, if they, if, if Catherine kills Avery, then I don't know, maybe she'll work with Loretta, I don't know what's going to happen there, but it's very interesting. So, when and Boyd meet Zachariah down in the mine, and Carl's down there, and they check their radios, and Boyd says to get ready for the boom, Carl looks at Wayne's Wayne Tips and says, nice shoes, Raylan comes over to talk to Ava and tells Earl to go get a smoke, Ava says to go on before Raylan crushes his nuts just because he can, and Ava says he won't be gone long, and Raylan says she looks good in that dress. She says it was supposed to be a party, and Raylan looks at her, and she says she he knows. She says she's supposed to tell him it's happening this week, but it's going down today and soon. She asks how he figured it out, and she tells him that Boyd almost killed her, and he asks what she's supposed to do, and she says, start a fire, clear the place out. He tells her to get to it, and 
it seems like she's still working them. There's a part of me that thinks that she is still working them, but then there's a part of me that's like, you know what, maybe she's just working with Boyd and doesn't really care about Raylan as much. I don't know. What do you guys think? Because um, I really can't tell. So Boyd and Zachary are looking at the charge. Boyd says the money is going to fall right down on his goddamn lap. He yells out, you can kiss my ass, Raylan Givens, which I thought was a funny line. Boyd tells Carla to tell Earl to do it because they're ready to go. And Ava goes to the kitchen and looks around. She waits for the cook to turn his back and throws a pan of grease over to start a fire. Pulls a fire alarm. Raylan looks at her. Then he walks toward Avery and Catherine. And Raylan tells Avery that he believes he's being robbed and they need to get to the vault. And Zachariah says a prayer as Boyd lights the fuse. And then he whacks Boyd with a shackle. Change him to where the rocks will fall. Now, if you remember... Avery and Raylan were possibly going to team up together, so definitely right here, I thought this was really interesting. So he, so Zachariah whacks Boyd with a shackle, chains him to where the rocks will fall, and there was a second where I thought they were going to kill off Boyd. Like, seriously, I thought they were going to do that. First of all, it's the final season, and also they're not playing around this season, so I kind of felt like Boyd was going to die in this episode. I really did. I don't know why. I just felt like in that scene, he was going to get killed, and he says... Boyd will be buried by his own greed, and his niece won't spend one more day with a crowder. And Zachariah takes off, and Boyd tries to cut off the fuse. He can't reach it. It keeps burning. Carl hears Boyd screaming and runs back, and wins at the ladder with him. Boyd's trying desperately to break loose and is screaming. See, Zachariah, this is like music to his ears, because this is what he's always wanted to do. If you remember, he hates the crowders. He wants nothing to do with them, especially because of Bowman, and he doesn't trust Boyd because of that. So... Carl comes right in from him, and he tells him to give him the rock hammer. He tells Carl to go. Boyd slams at the chain, trying to break it. Finally snaps it, then goes running, and the dynamite blows, and Tim and Rachel watch the mine entrance through binoculars, and I'm assuming Zachariah is dead. I don't think Zachariah would make it out of there, and I think he's pretty much dead. So, they see Carl, Boyd, and Wayne, but no money. So, they pretty much failed at that, and Avery and Raylan look at the money sitting safe in the vault, and Raylan says the dipshit is incapable enough to pull it off, and Avery says to give it a min, says maybe he'll try it again. And Avery says he doesn't understand Raylan. He says he gave him some of his money to help out with Walker, and then he figured out they were simpatico, and he says Raylan is just using him to get Boyd, and Raylan says he's doing what he has to do, and Avery says he does what he has to do, and Raylan asks if he cares to elaborate. Because, you know, he doesn't really, he's not really saying much. He's just saying, you do what you have to do. So I definitely feel like there's going to be a team up between these two. It seems like Raylan's interested, and I could definitely see them teaming up. So Boyd's back at the bar when Ava and Earl show up. Boyd tells Earl to get back to the portal to make sure the money doesn't leave. And Boyd rants to Ava and asks what she said to Zachariah. He's freaking out at her. This scene was amazing to watch. I mean... This is this was as crazy. It wasn't as crazy as when it looked like he was gonna kill her. But this scene, I thought he was legitimately going to hurt her. I really thought he was. And Boyd rants to Ava, asks what she said to Zachariah. He says her uncle tried to blow him up. He demands to know if she's lying to him because you know Heath wants to know was Ava a part of this? Because why would he just freak out on him? And Boyd sits down. And she asks if Zachariah is dead. He says he doesn't know. And of course, you know she tells him that he, she told him that he wasn't right in the head. And Boyd didn't understand that. And she asks about the money. And he says it's still in the vault, and she says he's going to hit it when they move it, and he needs to find a new way to get the money. So Raylan meets Tim and Rachel at the mine, and says Boyd couldn't give it up, and Rachel rants and says this case has turned up nothing, which it really hasn't. And Raylan says they have Ava and Wynn, which are both CIs now, and he says they're not in the end zone doing the icky shuffle, and he says Boyd is going to go at the money harder and stupider. He says Boyd will go at the money when Avery goes to move it, and uh, Rachel says, to think I was excited to have a big office because now they're involved in all this. So I gotta say, once again, another really solid episode. Absolutely loving this season. Zachariah is now dead and just a lot's gonna happen. Now my question is Loretta. I really want to talk about Loretta here. Where does Loretta, where is Loretta gonna stay loyal to? Is she gonna work with Raylan and Wynn? Or is she possibly going to work with Boyd? I really don't know. It seems like she doesn't really want anything to do with Raylan, but at the same time, it kind of seems like she's playing Boyd. So is she really just working with herself? I don't know. I just feel like she doesn't She doesn't have a specific person she's working with. Maybe she's just working with herself. Uh, what do you guys think? I, I really don't know there. Um, how is Boyd going to get this money? I don't know what's going to happen there. I mean, definitely he needs to find a way to get this money. Um, what's going on with Wynn? Is Wynn really going to work with Raylan, or is he going to work with Boyd? Is he going to secretly, like, work with Raylan, and is he going to be, like, how... Is he going to make it seem like he's working with Raylan, but he's really working with Boyd? I don't know. We'll see what happens there. It seems like Ava's on their side at this point, but maybe she's just doing that because, again, she wants to play Raylan. Because uh, you never really know what's going on there. Um, Avery and Raylan, I really am interested. If they want to team those two up, I'm very interested in seeing if that happens, because I think those two 
would be very good if we t if they had a team up because I think it'd be awesome to see. Honestly, I would love to see uh, Raylan and Avery team up. Definitely, that's something I'm also looking forward to. Actually, is if those two do team up because that could be awesome to watch and. Really, I think that's all I have to say about this episode. Overall, guys, another fantastic episode as usual. I'm loving this season. I have yet to see a bad episode this season. Every episode is just delivering consistently. It's consistently amazing. It's consistently good, and I'm loving that. I'm loving what this season is doing, and just it's perfectly closing things out. We have four episodes left, as I said, and I really don't want it to end. I'm kind of sad that it's ending because I'm really into the season. I love everything about the season, and I really don't want the season to end, but unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and now that we're at that point, I really want to talk about what I think is going to happen for the rest of the season. I think the rest of the season is just going to be about catching Boyd and finding a way to plot against Boyd, because it seems like it's just not working anymore, and honestly, I feel like Raylan and all of them, they should just give up, because it's not working anymore. It's not going to work, because I, I just feel like this is just going to end with Raylan dying. I mean, we saw his grave last week. We saw all of that. I definitely feel like that's foreshadowing his death, and I just feel like there's really no way they can do this anymore. They can't go after Boyd. They need to understand that. Just because they want to doesn't mean they can go after Boyd. They want to go after him, but it's not necessarily going to work, and I don't think it's the best thing for them to do anymore. But overall, guys, this is my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. Overall, guys, I thought this was a, another fantastic episode. Definitely second best episode of the season. Absolutely love, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for the, for the Flash. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.